We should start selling Rand Paul like Superman shirts that he emerging that, from the. Uh, we'll, from the we'll market it as the shirts he's going to have under his <laughs> suit when he pulls it off and you know brings the country to liberty. Welcome to the Lions of Liberty podcast. Here is your host, your guide, your shining beacon of liberty, Mark Clare. All right, folks, welcome on back to this here Lions of Liberty podcast and this here episode, which is number 103. And before we get into the show today, I have to take a second to tell you guys about our sponsors at Health Excellence Select. If you're like me and you had just had it with your government-mandated health insurance, you need to look into the concept of health sharing and the fantastic healthcare package from our friends at Health Excellence Select. To learn more, head over to lionsofliberty.com slash health. All right, folks, and it is time once again for one of my favorite features. I mean, there's so many here at the show, but this one, uh, this one's a good time every time to have uh, my good friend and associate Brian McWilliams in the studio here for another edition of Rand Paul Buses and Minuses. Rand, Paul, Lusses, and Minuses. Brian, welcome on in, pal. Thank you once again for welcoming me into this loving environment. You're looking a little tired today. You don't look your, your normal I'm self. I'm exceedingly What's, uh, tired. I, uh, exceedingly I was tired. in uh, Las Vegas with our legal counsel, ah. one, uh, <laughs> one Rico, and we had quite the time. I am still feeling it. For the, uh, the Mayor of Pacquiao fight, which I didn't actually watch, uh, we <laughs> actually played blackjack during that. It was very expensive. We decided not to go. Great. All right. Well, I think he probably made a wise choice looking I back so. from, from what I've, from yeah, what I've heard. It's not supposed to be the greatest fight. Hopefully, Four tickets, like $7,000? Oh, God. Oh, more than that. It was, uh, it was, I mean, tens of thousands of dollars. That first, free market. Yeah, they, they then dropped uh, precipitously before the event, as these things are wont to do. We were talking to some guy who paid, I think, 3700 for a ticket. And then he's like, now I looked at StubHub and it was 2700 I was like, oh, okay. Wow. But yeah, there were some on there that were like 790 thousand for i think ringside seats Whew, you know there ought to be a law as they say <laughs> that's just too status. too much money yeah well we all know we're status here at lines of liberty so anyway speaking of status let's talk about the subject of uh, this show no i'm just kidding i i'm not i'm not tossing that i mean he does work for the government so i mean technically he kind of has to be a status but let's talk about our guy Rand paul um you know we've spent many years really criticizing him and praising him and we will continue to do that both in written form as you do every week on Rand paul Luses and minuses every tuesday at lionsofliberty.com and you can find the full archive at i'll let you plug it let's see if you can nail your own plug uh, I believe it's linesofliberty.com forward slash Rand. You got it. I did get it. Good job. And let's not forget my Rand Poetry Slam hosted every time at the Earth Cafe. Was <laughs> that hosted? At, that's on Periscope every Wednesday night. Right? It's fantastic. All right. We won't tell you how Just to actually be sitting see alone in the bathtub with a bunch of candles or saying Maybe we Rand should Paul do that. Poetry. Rand Paul Slam Poetry. If he gets far in the primaries, I mean, there might be a call for that. Rand Paul Slam Po. That's what we can call it. Let's just can the show today and just do Ran, Rand Paul slam for, Slampos for a half hour. I like it. All right. Well, look, we haven't even gotten our trending um, hashtag going yet. Randy Pants. Hashtag Randy Pants, guys. Me and Brian are like the only ones tweeting this thing <laughs> out. We really need some help getting things trending. I'm not sure how, if you know how trending works. You need a lot of people. Yeah, to do it's it, a, so. the slow burn's not working. We need some help, people. So come on, Randy Pants it up. So yeah, every time you want to talk to us about Rand or have something to say about Rand, hashtag Randy Pants and tag us. And, you know, we'll, we'll get that conversation going going or at least a cool hashtag but let's talk about the campaign because the last time we did this show we uh the campaign had just he had just announced his run for presidency so it's been about a month ish so how, what have you thought about overall thoughts i guess of the rand paul campaign thus far well you know it's <laughs> Rand's. It, it's a lot of good stuff you know he's, he's come out pretty strong with uh again as we know doubling down on how the justice system doesn't really work in favor of everybody fairly, which I think is fantastic. He's really making that a key uh, of his messaging with the campaign. Uh, and that is, of course, attracted a lot of endorsement from the black community. J.C. Watt uh, was one of the people that threw his uh, endorsement behind him early on. And um, there were, you know, some basically uh, he'd also been doing a lot of speaking at black campuses and uh, and colleges, which had drawn him some good support from that community. And he's kind of been developing as a GOP member that actually would embrace uh, African-American and black communities. So in that regard, it's been going very well. Um, however, there have been some drawbacks. Of course, he had uh, very recently discussed that, 
you know, despite his outspoken uh, opposition to drones being used here in the U.S., he recently supported uh, the use of drones in military actions uh, in defense of Obama's action, wherein a, uh, a drone took out an American citizen. Did you see that? I presume you did. Well, of course I did, since I read your weekly column. I actually edit your weekly column. So, yes, I did see that. Now, just for people that might not be familiar with the story, why don't you just recap what that exact drone strike was that, we're, so, that he's talking about? Yeah, here. so in a nutshell, they had uh, they had enacted a drone strike against al-Qaeda, and they had gotten information that said, okay, that these, these leaders are here, and they did manage to get a, a leader that they were targeting. So, you know, hats off to you for that. But at the same time, they also took out— Well, let's not quite give hats off to that. Was the, this, this, <laughs> le- was this leader charger that no, thing? No, was he just no. the guy that— I mean, the, because even that, even forgetting, I mean, the big story is that an American was killed. Right. But well, let's talk about the fact that a guy that was not charged with any, no, any crime still. in any country anywhere was killed. And maybe he is somewhere, and maybe he has a rap sheet in Dubai or something. I don't know. But, the, you know, the, it really kind of distracts from the whole problem of these drone strikes in the first place. And we've talked about it before. It's not the technology of drones mm-hmm. that's terrible if a drone delivers me a pizza. I'm cool with that. Hopefully they'll get that going soon. But, uh, you know, it's 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 the fact that it's it's they skirt the sort of the rule of law. Right. You know, they're circumventing. They, the entire the you know, entire court system, the ability to defend yourself in the court of law, and uh, and yeah, they have the time they're just kind of taken out, and who knows if they're guilty or innocent. Presumed guilt seems to be all you need for sure. a. Uh, for if a drone you're someone they can call a member of whatever terrorist group, then you're guilty. It's just you already are. There's no need for a proceeding in the eyes of uh, the federal government, in the eyes of this administration. Right. And to go off on a further tangent with this, you and I have talked tangents about this in, the, in this show. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, you know, it's like they also talk about how this, you know, and it, it had gotten more defined. Thank goodness for uh, for Rand, but still, there's a lot of gray area. But in uh, in you know what does define an enemy combatant, and that of course is a very very gray area still. So even if you're you know whoops I dialed the wrong number when I was ordering my uh, my drone pizza and accidentally called somebody from Al Qaeda and now they trace it Al-Qaeda back. Al Qaeda pizza. Yeah, you called Papa, um, not Papa John. It's always hot, always hot. So oh, always. Papa Papa Al Kib. There you know. go. Yeah, so it's just, you know, very very uh, gray area. You don't know who you're talking to. And then the FBI says, oh, hey, you're connected to this guy. You're not an enemy combatant, so they can take you out. You have no rights to, uh, to your legal right to defend yourself anymore. It's a messy situation. So yeah, so they ended up they did end up actually killing an American in this and, and what what did Rand and, and another and another guy that was also a hostage. So two hostages were taken, one an American and uh, and yeah, they ended up killing him and they claimed they didn't know he was there. Whether that's true or not is who knows. But um, yeah, that was they you know basically looked at it as collateral damage. They got their man and uh, Rand Paul had come out and said, "I understand the use of drones and military actions here," and he didn't really didn't really condemn um, Obama in any way. So yeah, he actually said, "You know, I've been an opponent of using drones about people not involved in combat. However, if you're holding hostages, you are kind of involved in combat." Which, you know, it's true <laughs> in a way. But at the same time, I mean, who drops a missile on a, on a hostage situation in the U.S.? I mean, right. I don't think that the situation quite applies. or At least it, it should anyway. We should apply the same principles to all these situations. Just because it's over in Yemen or wherever, you know, shouldn't mean that suddenly rights go out the window and you can just start flinging missiles all over the place. I mean, if we started just shooting missiles at any hostage situation in a U.S. city, people would be up in arms. Rightfully so. Because that's not just, I mean, obviously you're killing everyone in the building if you're just shooting a missile right. whistle that way. So, you know, if, if they are and especially if they're holding hostages and you know that they're hostages. I mean, did you just make the decision to kill the hostage? Is that is that, is that basically what they did there? That's basically taking the movie Speed where you, you shoot the hostage. Yeah, essentially. It's Speed in the Middle that's East. That's an old reference, people. Should, I hope you're a, watching the Keanu movies that we are. <laughs> that should be a spinoff. They should do a Speed 3 in like the in like the desert. Oh, okay. And again, it's just Keanu behind and the, it's just uh, on a camel, behind though. a TV screen back in Utah, though. Just if you don't keep this on. camel going over three miles per hour... <laughs> Then Dubai will explode. Okay. <laughs> anyway, we'll do a different podcast about our about our sequ- speed sequel ideas. Maybe, maybe, maybe more, another day. A more coherent podcast where I'm not on uh, <laughs> seven hours sleep or whatever the last three sure. days. Well, let's move on to some more Rand stuff then, since uh, since I don't know how long the movie stuff is gonna 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 take gonna carry us, us but, um, through this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's see. You did mention the endorsements, so I want to touch on a few of his endorsements first. And uh, uh, an obvious one just happened, which is uh, pretty much an obvious Paul Luss, yep. and that is Mr. Justin Amash who yeah. came out this week to endorse Rand. So uh, yeah, one of our faves. it's kind of a it's kind of a 
slam dunk here, but what do you think about Justin Amash and his endorsement? Well, I think it's great. I mean, look, if, if nothing else, it just, in a way, it still uh, cements Rand as, you know, if you're a liberty-leaning guy, you're still going to like, you know, Rand. Uh, Amash is one of the most libertarian-leaning uh, representatives we have in uh, in Congress. So, you know, the fact that he's endorsed him says that Rand hasn't strayed too far away from the farm, I guess, in theory. Although, um, you know, who else is he going to support? Kind of like the way we look, we look at Rand, no matter what, oh, not no matter what, but he's got a lot of leeway with us where, you know, the point to which we would say, okay, we no longer support Rand Paul, as opposed to all of these other clowns and cronies is pretty far down the road. So Amash may just say, well, of course, the, that point's pretty far down for me too. Of course, Rand's my man, uh, opposed to, you know, he's not going to put his, his support behind the huckster. Mike Huckabee, who just also announced, and they have uh, they've been allied for some time, Amash and, and Rand. They, I mean, you could almost say Justin Amash has been like the Rand Paul of of the Congress, basically. Right. Yeah. Exactly introducing right. similar bills regarding yeah. medical marijuana, the military, spying, all, all that kind of stuff. So it, it's an obvious fit. He was always going to endorse them, so may as well come out early and, and hop on the, those endorsements. So right. he also got some other endorsements, not ones that will he'll really tout maybe politically, but he did get the endorsement of some of a guy some call. This used to be a name that they gave to Mr. Murray Rothbard, but I still see people out there calling Walter Block Mr. Libertarian yeah, for his, yeah. his supposed attempts to always be pure or try to break things down into the, the most principled way. But and you know, it might have been surprising for some people who don't see Rand Paul as being all that principled to get the endorsement from Walter Block. You know, and speaking of uh, Walter Block, I'll actually be interviewing him this coming Monday on this very show, and we will be talking about the subject of his endorsement of Rand Paul. So be sure to check that out this coming Monday, episode number 104. It's going to be a good time. So what did you think of that endorsement? Look, it's kept placing the same thing I said about uh, Amash. You know, look, uh, Walter's, he, you know, Rand is no perfect angel, but he is still by and far away the best candidate you have if you're a libertarian-leaning guy uh, or somebody who believes in the principles of libertarianism. He's he's the closest you're going to get as of right now. And, you know, hey, he still may pull up his uh, his... Typical uh, senator's clothing and have on the Superman libertarian shirt underneath later down the road. So he's just he's giving him the benefit of the doubt, as are we all. We should start selling Rand Paul like Superman shirts that he emerging that, from the. Uh, well, he will market book. it as the shirts he's going to have under his <laughs> suit when he pulls it off and you know brings the country to liberty. And- Start making some cash. Cold hard cash. If Rand Paul is Clark Kent slash Superman, man, I could spend a whole podcast just just like casting a Superman movie based on based on all these candidates. But who's Lex Luthor? That can we do? I that think one clearly least? John McCain is Lex Luthor. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's almost there. You just have to shave off a little bit more hair, and he's basically become. Oh boy, become you, Lex. you better get to work on Photoshop tomorrow morning to make that John <laughs> That's McCain. A good idea. As Lex Remind Luthor me in the morning. Oh, I will. Let's not forget one other endorsement. By the way, a man who always looks even more tired than I feel. Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn, the, <laughs> the tiredest man alive, who did come out. He didn't give an official sort of political endorsement, but he was at a, a state convention of uh, Young Americans for Liberty, I believe it was, or hopefully it wasn't the other one, and then I make a fool out of myself. But I believe it was Young Americans for Liberty. It may have been Students for Liberty. One of them had an event here in California that uh, Vince Vaughn did appear at, and he made some comments regarding Rod and Rand. But regarding Rand, I believe he actually, he didn't really give like a full endorsement, but he said that he likes Rand Paul very much. Mm-hmm. And hey, that's not bad. I, t- if Vince Vaughn said he liked me very much, I would be touting it to Over the world. Over the so. moon. Dear mom, guess what happened today? Yeah. You can kind of tell in his comments that he really does like, he loves like Ron Paul and his consistency. And then when he was asking about Rand, he's kind of like, oh yeah, no, nah, he's good too. But then he's like, but man, I love Ron. So, yeah. Which is kind of <laughs> how I think most of us feel exactly. about it too. But, you know, in, in a way it's like the reason we love Ron more are the reasons that Rand seems more electable to other people that aren't right. us crazy libertarians. So well, I think if you ask of- Ron Paul himself, he's like, yeah, I like Rand. <laughs> <laughs> that's- and that's Ron Paul. Oh, yeah, most that. people probably think that Ron Paul and Rand Paul are the same person, actually, at this point. So, True. I mean, with, with the, the education of our uh, our sort of voting populace as it is. But, hey, we're working to change that. That's why we have LionsLiberty.com. That's mm-hmm. why we strive to advance the ideas of liberty. LionsLiberty.com, folks. Check it out every single day. But moving along, at least every Tuesday, because if you're listening to this show, you got to read Ryan's column. That's Ryan's right. Lines. Let's talk about some of the uh, the sort of political moves and, and statements that Rand's been making here. He, he made an interesting comment the other week that I want to talk about. That's the one where he mentioned that he, he thought 
Saddam Hussein should never have been toppled. And I think this is one that got a lot of the neocons sort of panties in a bunch, oh, since, sure. of course, this was the big program of Mr. George Bush, who I think he and Dick Cheney to this day still defend the action. And, and you know, despite all utilitarian evidence, moral evidence that it was a complete absolute disaster on a humanitarian level and and pretty much every level so what did you think about his comments here that we just should have never taken saddam hussein out well he's i mean he's totally correct and you know it's like i'll i'll, I'll just do a quick half quote here and and sum it up but you know basically he just said that uh hussein was the bulwark against iran you know that he basically bulwark. had held back That's a, a good lot word of bulwark it is i give him a paul us for that <laughs> <laughs> Good job. 50 cents and a plus for you. Uh, but no, it's true. He, he, you know, I Really, uh, Hussein did hold back Iran and he did keep things in check. And granted, was he cruel? Yes. Uh, did he treat his people the best? No. Were they a democracy? No. But you know what? It's not America's role to get in there and say, hey, you know what? Ah, we don't like that. We're going to overthrow it. Does it, you know, does it help Americans? No. Does it help our freedom? No. And you know, things are still messed up there to this day. It's still, you know, we're still engaged in this this endless war. So Rand pointed that out. He's dead on. And, um, you know, neocons aren't going to like it, but that's, you know, tough noogies. And uh, I do think it's kind of funny though, that he is, he's saying, you know, stepping out saying, yeah, we should have never toppled Hussein, but one of his books, presidents in their prayers would have to have a part in it. You know, Rand's got a book coming out too. We discussed that in a previous podcast, wherein he talks about presidents and their prayers. And of course, George Bush famously said that it was God himself that told him to go in and invade Iraq. So, uh, kind of funny there. Is this the same God that told Rand Paul that gay marriage is a moral crisis, or is this a different? God? I do not know. I, I get all these gods confused. Or the neocon God, the same as the the quasi libertarian God. I just, I just don't know. Uh, Religion liber- confuses. Libertario. Me. Yeah, I pray to him. <laughs> I will. You know what? I will pray to Libertario. That actually sounds like a Spider Man villain or it something does. too. It's a little scary, but that's what you want in a God. So you want to be Lex a little Luther bit McCain, Libertario. <laughs> F the Avengers. We're going to make a real superhero movie. In next week's thrilling episode. When this thing's all said and done. I know. What do you, about, what do you think about Hussein, by the way? Well, it's interesting because, I mean, he's almost making a utilitarian case, really. He's just saying, well, in this situation, you know, I... I it turned out that because of Top Lake Saddam Hussein, things got really bad and worse and would have been better overall if we did leave him in power. And that is probably true, but I I don't know. To me, there's something missing in his statements here where I, I do wish he'd put a little principle forward. I mean, I mean, I think we need to do more than say Saddam Hussein's a bad guy. I think we need to say, look, if you're, if you're going to try to bring freedom to people, you need to actually allow people to create their own freedom by respecting individual rights, by respecting property rights, by, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with, quote unquote, taking out Saddam Hussein just on its surface. He's a bad guy who was violating people's rights. You know, there's not a problem with human beings doing that, I should say. Right, yeah, there's a problem with countries doing that, especially when they're not declaring acts of war and anyway. Yeah, sure, especially when you're just kind of, you're not really there to take out Saddam Hussein, per se. You're there to take control of the country for other reasons, and Saddam Hussein happens to be the obstacle that's in the way. But there was no real principled stance going into it. And I feel like he's not expressing enough of, like, a principled stance of what maybe the alternative was, you know? Uh, which I think a lot of libertarians are guilty of when we talk about not doing this in foreign policy, not doing that in foreign policy, and hands-off, hands-off. Well, it's not that human beings should be hands-off of atrocities. It's that our American government is coercively funded. Mm-hmm. It's proven in many ways that it is not interested in individual rights, and there's no reason to think that it's not going to be violating rights when it goes over to these other countries. And, and that's, that's the case in Iraq. That's the case in Libya. Uh, I just wish Rand would maybe put more of a forward statement out of, uh, on that instead of just doing the standard kind of we shouldn't have gone in but yeah. i mean i i agree with him I mean, it's yeah, not like, it's he's looking at to paul us for that and yeah uh yeah I'll, I'll give him a paul us for it still i guess <laughs> if i have to because i'm not gonna give him a push i don't do that anyway too good to push too good to push we got so many phrases for rand it's really amazing we haven't been asked to, to be hired for the campaign yet. i know libertarian Especially since we do give, a, us, a, give us a call a, a weekly a them. weekly show a, a <laughs> weekly article criticizing him listen to by him. twelves of peoples yeah. no that's a lot we actually get a lot more listeners. No, there's at least multiple twelve. i'm always surprised how many listens it gets in truth hey there you go don't be don't sell yourself short i know it's not us it's randy pants that's what that's draws right. in the ratings randy pants hashtag 
What else is going on with this guy? He made some other comments this well, week. Well, here's, here's another talk good about one. A... You know, I, one I wanted to talk about, which actually I liked a lot, was uh, his oh. You're talking about the environment, environment one? Yeah, I'm trying to remember the exact name. It's it kind is of called tricky... I'll Help You by Pulling Up Your yeah, Own you Articles Defense of Defense of Environment and Property Act. There you go. Um, which I actually like because, you know, basically what it does is it's trying to do a little bit more to protect those property rights in regards to, you know, the Army Corps of Engineers can come in or the EPA can come in and just kind of, you know, wreck your property or take your property and say, we need this property. And Rand's kind of putting forward this bill, which would help to protect people's property a lot more. So, and one of the things is, you know, it's just, you know, basically paying you four times the worth and, and taking pretty interesting steps to kind of safeguard your property and your rights against that uh, sort of action by the government. Well, I certainly can't argue with that one. I mean, that, that's a pretty straightforward one. I mean, obviously, it's not, you know doing things that we'd like to go all the way, like repeal the EPA and yeah. that kind of thing. But, I mean, uh, in terms of little steps you can take, and this is kind of like a point where people say, yeah, Rand Paul isn't Ron, and you can't just tweak government here and there, and that's the big criticism you'll hear a lot. And, I mean, I agree, the problems run deeper than tweaking laws here and there, but there are things we can do. I mean, yeah, w- California tweaked their drug laws by decriminalizing a lot of drugs. You can say that was just a tweak, but it's a tweak that's going to result in a lot of people getting out of prison and not being locked behind bars for nonviolent crimes. So there are times when tweaking things can actually result in freedom for a lot more people. Well, and Ron himself acknowledged that you can't just repeal the EPA. You can't repeal the Education Association. It's kind of like these baby steps things. And, you know, even if you got in presidency, he wouldn't have been able to do that. So it's interesting to see Rand kind of already start to chip away at the system without completely saying, tear it down and burn it up. All right. And these things take literal acts of Congress yeah. uh, to do. So he's he knows he's, he submits a bill saying repeal the EPA. Well, that's not going nowhere. Mm. But if he submits a bill like this that has some reasonable restrictions that you can at least start to kind of sort of help people deal with these agencies in a better way and give them some sort of legal backing on that. Well, I, I can't see it as anything other than a... Call us. Call us. Well, Brian, some good stuff we're talking about here. I just want to take a quick break to tell everyone about our sponsors over at Health Excellence Select. Believe me, guys, I know nobody likes dealing with health insurance companies. It's bad enough that you're sick, but now, thanks to the ACA, you're forced to pay for all sorts of coverage you don't even want or need, and the odds are you are indeed paying for it. I was frustrated, too, until I did some research and found out about health sharing, where like-minded, health-conscious individuals get together to cover each other's medical costs. And now the fine folks at Health Excellence Select have taken it to another level with a complete health care service, Combining health sharing with personal care assistance to help you find the doctors that you need at the best price, 24-7 phone access to physicians, along with discounts on dental and vision. And if that wasn't enough, they even have a website that works, if you can believe that. Guys, if you are struggling with a solution to your health care needs, look no further than Health Excellence Select. For more information, head on over to lionsofliberty.com slash health. Uh, what about some minuses? Has he had any minuses lately? We gotta no, talk he's about de- oh, he's definitely had some minuses. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about one that you gave a minus to recently, and that was uh, topically his a uh, his comments regarding what's going on in Baltimore, the uh, the Baltimore riots. So mm-hmm. why don't we give it a little listen? This is a clip from the Laura Ingram show. You know, I don't know if there is an answer from the federal government. It obviously is a is is a local problem primarily, but you do have to have enough uh, show of security enough show of a police force to deter the kind of action. I think once it happens, it sort of spirals out of control. And uh, it's, it's, it's depressing, it's sad, it's scary. I came through the train on Baltimore last night. I'm glad the train didn't stop. But the thing is, is that really there are so many things we can talk about mm-hmm. that I think it's, it's something we talk about not in the immediate aftermath, but over time. You know, the breakdown of the family structure, the lack of fathers, the uh, the lack of sort of a moral code in our society. And this isn't just a racial thing. It goes across racial boundaries. But we do have problems in our country, and you, you see this, and you see that we're close to the tipping point, closer to the tipping point than many think. And um, so there are a lot of things that can be done, but there can be no excuse for the behavior. So there you see, uh, you know, you could hear it right there. There were there were a couple different parts of it, and and you know, a lot of people reacted to two parts. The first part was that uh, he made a joke about he's glad the train didn't stop going through Baltimore, which I think's fine. It's you know, look, it's a situation. Uh, granted, he's making slightly light of it, but give me a break. The guy said he's glad the train didn't stop. I think we're all glad the train didn't stop. 
And I would have made the same joke. I'm sure many people would have. So I don't see what the problem is there too yeah, much. Yeah, I think some people might take it as a slight on Baltimore. I think it was more just like, no, there's riots there. Right. So obviously I don't want to be there. I don't think it was really you know anything deeper yeah, than you, that. You it's... don't want your plane to be forced down in Afghanistan anytime soon right. either. You it know? doesn't so, mean you support the war. <laughs> right. Exactly. So some people's reaction to that was kind of ridiculous. But then he goes on to say you know, that basically where he gets in trouble is he goes on to talk about uh, black fathers not being around, which, look, it may statistically be true, and and that's not really something we want to get into too much, but... If oh, I'm going to get into it. <laughs> pull up the stats. No, but if you're Rand, you don't want to get into that, because it's like, it, we all know what you're talking about, and he doesn't reference specifically saying black fathers, but... Uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of African Americans and black people in Baltimore, and clearly, when you're referencing fathers not being around, you're talking about the black community. So with that, he got a lot of flack, and I feel rightly so. It was a stupid thing to say, and you don't need to throw it into the conversation at this point in time, especially after all the good you've done making such forward steps with that community. See, I I don't know. I I don't think it's. An incorrect comment. I see what you're saying. Like, it doesn't sound good. It sounds like he's just talking sort of the, uh, especially with the sort of the way that people review Republicans as like racist and religious freaks and all this stuff. Like, any comment that can be taken racist that probably will be just because of the party he's associated with and, and the fact that there are so many racist idiots <laughs> that around that do make actually racist comments like that. So I, I can see how it can be taken that way. But, you know, the fact is there are reasons that there are fathers are gone. A lot of the time. Many reasons. Uh, one of them are just the economic conditions, which a lot of times in these cities lead fathers to pursue the only avenue that there is for them to achieve money and, and stuff for their family. And that is often drug dealing, which goes back to the war on drugs as well. And the only reason that opportunity even exists is because of the war on drugs. But so many people get put into that. And once they're in the system, a lot of these dads are in jail. A lot of these dads aren't around. And, and look, I'm sure there's some level of actual deadbeat dads that are just plain bad people. But, you know, we also have to look at government incentives. I mean, during the 60s, all sorts of economic laws. I, I talked about this with Robert Wenzel in episode 22 of this show. You can go back at the archive, linesofliberty.com slash podcast. Check that out. But, um, you know, he was talking about how I think he calls it um, LBJ's great grandkids. They're all these sort of uh, young black youth that are unemployed on the streets. And a lot of that is because of all these sort of economic incentives that went into place to sort of incentivize young mothers to have children and that kind of thing through different sort of financial incentives. And, and that leads people to have more families. I'm not making a judgment about whether it's wrong to have a kid out of wedlock. I don't have, like, a religious belief about that. But it, it's, I mean, it just makes common sense. If you have a lot of mothers having kids without a father, I mean, well, there you go. <laughs> then they're going to be fatherless, and well, that's going to lead and, to a lot of problems. And you're not wrong that, yeah, a lot of these guys are going to be gone because of the just system. And, and, you know, I mentioned that in the article, too. But the problem is Rand didn't say that. He didn't explain the context of it, his comments. So people are instantly just going to say, oh, what's he saying that, that black dads are deadbeats? And he's getting a lot of negative reactivity. Whereas if he had said, it's that you know a lot of that has to do with the justice system a lot of that happens to do with welfare system a lot of it happens to do with incentives maybe people had said okay that makes sense but in the context he didn't go into it all it sounded was that he was basically taking pot shots at the black family arrangement and you know i mean it, it's not good it wasn't smart it was tone deaf and you know i give him i give him the minus for it <laughs> I understand what he's coming from, but I'm looking at this empirically, and I just think it was a it was a big error on his part, especially when everybody's looking at this one topic too. He does talk about that stuff a lot, though. It's just maybe not in this specific context of this specific statement. So, well, people have forgotten clearly because he's getting roasted. Well, for I'm going to be the contrarian. I'm going to give him a Paul Us. <laughs> Even though I do agree, I, I will add the caveat, the asterisk that I have the same criticism of you, that I do wish he had taken the opportunity to do more of an explanation in that statement. That's pretty much my criticism that I had of the Saddam Hussein comment, too. It's not that I disagree with anything that he said in either way, and maybe part of it's the soundbite culture we live in. Maybe he didn't have the opportunity in that interview to really go into it, because he knows he's got three minutes, and the answer's going to end. So a lot of this is our, our sort of soundbite media, and that's why you need Lions of Liberty podcast, where we actually talk about exactly. this stuff. Well, that kind of thing happened with Ron Paul, by the way. You know, we oh, would yeah. we would always complain about that. We'd be watching the debates and, and live tweeting them as we would do. And Ron would have these great quips and we'd be like, yeah, Zingo. But then we'd be like, you know what? Nobody else has any idea what he's talking about. Right. You it's really got to know where... the tenets of liberty and, and Austrian economics and what he's basing this in to even get it. And without that context, you're just kind of like, whoa. You know, it's like that's a, a good point. I mean, if you, if you already get it, you're like, yeah. And if you don't, you're like, hey, Rand Paul's a racist. So. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, he's a raving lunatic. Put this senile fool out of his misery. You know, it's 
It's kind of like that. So it harkens back to that a little bit. Is this another one sentence earlier example? Is I think it is a one the... sentence earlier right. example. Rand Paul one sentence earlier. Rand oh, yeah. Paul one sentence earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a Rand great song, folks. It's catching yeah. on. That and Randy Pants are going to be trying to Hashtag Randy before Pants. Before we know it. Before we know it. Uh, well, we're going to wrap up the show. I do want to end on a... Let's end on a good comment, the one that we can both agree on, at least. And that is, uh, he did make one more comment this week. And uh, it was referring to a guy we've already addressed on this show, Mr. Luther himself, Mr. John McCain. What did he say about John McCain? He had some, uh, I guess, I assume McCain wears panties? I don't know. Giant diapers in a bunch? I've got uh, to I think that, yeah, he's wearing the Depends <laughs> at all point in times. Not to take... If any of our audience is wearing Depends, then I apologize. But... Uh, yes. So he basically just called McCain an old guy, which of course he is. He is very old and, uh, in my opinion, very out of date. But he took a, a basically a shot at him after uh, he had made a speech today. And, and uh, John McCain had called him a wacko bird as well as just an homage. So he had referred to some old guy from Arizona calling him a wacko bird. But, of course, this is in the context of a rousing supportive crowd I believe it was in Michigan. Maybe yeah, Rand said, remember there was some old guy, I can't remember his name, who called us wacko birds. And he said, how wacky is it to be somebody who actually believes in the Constitution and all of the Bill of Rights? I won't tell you who it is, but it's a senator from Arizona. So it's, it's a typical go. Rand Paul sort of being funny, but that's not that funny, but it's kind of funny anyway. Yeah. Kind of common. It's politician funny. It's, it's not it's, real. Life. Yeah, it's why he's known as, what is he, king of the king of the internet trolls as far as politics go? Yeah, he's, he, he's a Twitter troll. He, he is a Twitter or, or maybe libertarian girls on there doing Love it. it. I don't know. Even before, I think he was Twitter trolling people. But yeah, whatever. Look, John McCain's old. <laughs> I mean, what do you... If old... If John McCain is not old, then old, the word old has no meaning. So, right. And I, to me... The word "old" is not is just descriptive. It's just saying what it is, and I don't see how "old" is more offensive than "wacko." Right. He he's called him a wacko. He's, Rand he's saying Rand Paul is literally insane, while Rand Paul is just you know making an right. observation. And in statement. the context of foreign policy, you know what? Isn't the definition of an insanity, which I think this isn't true, <laughs> but they always say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. What have we been doing for the last forty plus years, well, fifty years? Some people in Arizona policy? have been voting for John McCain for that long. I think. God, I know he's brought for. But seriously, foreign policy, the same thing. So McCain just says, oh, keep doing what we're doing. It's working so well. Oh, people love us. We just gotta be friends. People love us, and that's a great way to end the show, with the idea that people love us. So that is it for this month for Rand Paul Us and Minuses. We will be doing this show every single month here at LionsOfLiberty.com because we got to keep an eye on this, this Rand Paul character. And, of course, if you're interested in all of our election coverage, come over to LionsOfLiberty.com slash election 2016 where we're doing all of our presidential profiles anybody at all that declares for president will get the lions of liberty treatment including rand eventually but we do enough of a weekly treatment here that we think we're going to hold off on his big pizza a little bit but you can of course find rand pluses and minuses at lions of liberty.com slash rand you can find us on facebook facebook.com slash lions of liberty over on the twitter at lions of liberty so many ways you can communicate with us just keep on doing it and until next episode when i will be speaking with Walt Walter Block about, amongst many other things, Rand Paul and his endorsement of him as well. Until then, folks, come on, help me out, Brian. Live long and live free. John McCain's old. John McCain's old. Rand Paul Slampo. Rand Paul. Slampo. Head of editing and mastering is John Dawson.